It was Fast Car, Tracy Chapman song, and that of course touches on the subjects that are informing this show, which is migration, travelling, and indeed the Irish in Britain. And we have two guests with us right now. We have Sarah Dunn. Hello, Sarah. Hello. Hi. Uh, Sarah, you're the daughter of the legendary traveller singer, Pekka Dunn. Yes, that's right. I'm the youngest of his uh, brood. <laughs> and we're going to be talking about um, Pekka. And uh, we're also joined by Brian Dalton. Hi, Brian. Hello. Um, you're from the organisation Irish in Britain, and you have the unbelievable exhibition that's on downstairs right now as we're recording uh, looking back to look forward to 50 years of the Irish in Britain. Yes that's right we're very pleased we had our launch night last night and um, it's the culmination of a year's work for us um, as an organisation and a great response from the Irish community who absolutely want their stories to be recorded and shared in this way but look it's absolutely the right time to be championing migrant contributions here in Britain mm -hmm at a time like this, mm -hmm. um, after so much negative and toxic press around the whole conversation around migrants. So we're very proud to be making the case for positive contributions for migrants. And this exhibition um, lays out the story for the Irish community. But we also think it has wider uh, relevance for the British public and remind them that uh, post-war British history is one that features migrants. Yeah, I'm, I, I whizzed around the exhibition beforehand. Uh, I was amazed. I'm amazed. It only took you a year to put it together because it's so detailed. But there are a couple of things that struck me. That you, you have newspaper cuttings which showed that in the 70s, for instance, in London could be a hostile environment for the Irish community. And going further back, you've got that, uh, some would say, iconic, notorious sign: yeah. "No Irish, no dogs, no blacks." Or yeah. no black. Well, of course, that's why the diaspora experience in Britain is absolutely unique. And of course, as a, as, a, as a people, we are all over the world. But the context here in Britain is unique, given the political and social and economic backdrop. So those kind of pictures and uh, moments really illustrate, I suppose, the political atmosphere, absolutely. the state of British-Irish relations, community cohesion on the ground, and of course, uh, the experience for communities like Irish people and other migrant groups are so often determined by, by the relationships between governments. Mm -hmm. And in this case, it was Britain and Ireland. And of course, we all remember the dark days yeah, we, of the yeah, Troubles. This moving image of um, Paul Hill and Jerry, yes. the uh, Guildford Four, the Birmingham Six getting out of um, prison, being released after spending years and years locked up for things that they didn't do. Yes. Some great images. And we have Just... Breda Power, the daughter of Billy Power, yes. who gives a really moving testimony um, from the day that uh, her dad was released from the old, at the Old Bailey. Yeah. So the thing about oral histories is when you ask a question, you've got to be prepared for the answer because uh, some of the histories are really unfiltered and they're raw and they're, and they're moving. Um, but in a way, they illustrate history in a way that other, other mediums don't do. That's why they're so immediate. That's why their people are drawn to them. Um, and that's why they endure. So I think oral histories have a really important place in telling the story Absolutely. about a community. And it's in our own words. We have control over these. So hugely important. And what I particularly like downstairs is the way you can... You see, you've got little panels, and there's about 15 potential oral histories, and you can choose which one you listen to and which order you listen to them in. It's, it's a really difficult thing to mount oral histories, because what, what do you do with them? Because they are so powerful, but ultimately they, they are, they're audio. So we've been blessed with the call-out that we've made for pictures, keepsakes, materials to give it context. So we received a huge response of material from people, which helped us then curate it into something interactive and very immediate, like you've uh, got downstairs. I love it when you listen to one of the oral histories and you, you see the picture of the person in front of you. I think that's so important. Yeah. You know, it's not just hearing the voice, but seeing that picture is yeah. very moving. And it's a really important thing. As Irish people and as migrants... Mm -hmm. Um, there's a real tension. A lot of people left Ireland because of very difficult reasons. Um, and our history is something that we're comfortable to look at because it inspired many of us to leave. But at the same time, we're hugely proud to be Irish. Um, and there's a strange tension in that, that you're hugely proud to be Irish, but have also earned the right to be critical of the place that you left. 
And it is part of the migrant experience. And I think the exhibition articulates that tension really yeah, well. Definitely. It's on here um, for another week or so, but then you're on the road. Where are you yes. going to? So we're going to Liverpool after London, yeah. then we're going to Leeds, and then we're going to Birmingham. We could have gone to other cities, um, but we logistical challenges, geographical challenges, financial constraints. We went to four cities, but we picked those cities because they're all big, large Irish historical yeah. cities. So you're in the Flory in Liverpool, That's the right. Arts Centre, and you're in the Slung Low in Leeds. That's right. And then you go to a science museum, the Think Tank. Yes. It's great venues. Yeah. Uh, great we're day. really looking forward to it. And of course, alongside this, we've got an online exhibition, which is... Um, Permanent. So for people who can't leave the exhibitions, they can access all that material online. Brilliant. That's and then excellent. ultimately, we deposit all the material at the London Met University. Excellent. So there is a research legacy there for years to come. I'd recommend uh, going down. I went down to see it myself. And I, I think it's great to give a voice to people that generally wouldn't uh, be heard. Um, and there's a wide, like, diverse range of stories to, to listen to and to explore down there. Um, I think it's great. I was very yeah, impressed when brilliant. I went down. Yeah. Um, that, that actually brings us to your father, Pekka Dunn, because mm -hmm. he was uh, an iconic traveller singer, and by doing so, he uh, was a voice for a community that would otherwise be unheard. Yes, absolutely. So um, he addressed a lot of kind of, I suppose, social issues and issues around discrimination against uh, the travelling community through his music. Um, and he did it not just through music, but through storytelling as well. Um, and uh, he had a great career in Ireland and abroad. Um, and he spent, you know, his whole life traveling and, and playing music. He was extraordinary. He had a gray head of hair like Sarah here. <laughs> uh, he, and he, he was the real deal, wasn't he, as a traveler? And Absolutely. He, he loved living on the road. And I think near the end, he actually went back into a caravan, possibly. But I do know... There's amazing footage of him on the Late Late Show. On the Late Late Show? Yes. Uh, and the whole unusual for the Late Late Show, is, which is full of audiences, kind of middle class audiences, it's just full of travellers. Yeah. And the pecker is the king. The <laughs> king of the travellers. Could you say pecker came from somewhere? If you're part of the travelling community... You yeah, you'd say I'd say he came from Ireland. <laughs> yeah, no, but would you would you narrow that down to a village, um, a town, a county? Yeah, uh, he was he was born in Castlebar in County Mayo, oh, wow. um, but then his family they they tried to settle in Wexford, and um, they they ran into issues when they tried to settle down um, because they were from the travelling community. They weren't um, accepted or welcomed, and so they had to move on again. Um, and obviously, you know, that affects everything in terms of education and obviously very hard to try to bring up children when you're when you're on the road. Um, but uh, he did eventually, you know, we settled, he settled with uh, my my mum in County Clare and uh, he did go back to Wexford. So he brought us back. Uh, we spent time traveling as well when we were growing up and we actually did go back to Wexford town and we used to busk there. I grew up uh, busking alongside him at the, wow. the GAA matches, but oh, in certain uh, places in Ireland as well, like in Wexford town and uh, did a lot of busking in Killarney and Tipperary and yeah. Would you say Pecker is the last of the travellers? No! Are you, are you and your siblings the last of the travellers? Are your children going to be the last of the travellers? Yeah, so the, this is the last of the travelling people. Um, and I suppose, you know, when he's, when he's writing music like this, it's a culture that's so oppressed and you kind of feel like you're, you're being pushed outside of society and it's like, how, is your, how are you going to survive that? But there's actually, you know, I know that there's some great musicians from the Irish travelling community that have come um, after, after my dad. So I think that, um, I think that there is a, a strong heritage there to continue. Sorry, you're going to sing a song for us. Yes, I am. Down in the gutter. In this legion of losers, of winos and boozers, at the top of the bottom I stand. Doomed and defeated, my hopes are retreated. I'm what's left of what once was a man. In this kingdom of outcasts, where pride ranks of outlasts, 
any hay barns my royal domain. God knows and I know I'm king of the winos and at the top of the trash heap I reign. In a state of depression, that's where I am living, in a world full of pain and misery, where there's nothing but sadness and sorrow and madness, but it's home to a loser like me. Down in the gutter, I tremble and I shudder, but the bottle can't warm me enough. Oh, what a horror to think of tomorrow. I just dreamt that the grapes all dried up. In a state of depression, that's where I am living. In a world full of pain and misery Where it's nothing but sadness and sorrow and madness But it's home to a loser like me Yes, twas home to a loser like me hey. Sarah Dunn, you may be down in the gutter, but you're looking up at the stars. There's no doubt I about that. that. that whoever wrote that song uh, picked up the, the melody from Hank Williams. Yeah. I think it's